If you click on this video, then that means that you want to start dropshipping niched clothing, but you're not entirely sure how to get started or where to get started. Now, don't worry because you're in the right place. This video is gonna explain absolutely everything that you need to know on how you can get started dropshipping niche clothing. From picking your niche to creating your store and even more, this video explains it all. So make sure you stick around all the way to the end. Be better than the gap. Say it. I'm better than the gap. Also remember, as always, we have an easy to reference cheat sheet with all of the different information, links, tips, and tricks that I'm gonna be giving you in today's video. If you want access to that, just go ahead and drop a comment down below with the hashtag niches and let me know what your takeaways from this video. Once I see that you went ahead and did that, I'll reply back with a link to the sheet. All right, without waiting any further, let's just go ahead and jump straight into it, shall we? So before we do get started, Let's figure out exactly what we mean by niched clothing dropshipping. So when we're talking about niched clothing dropshipping, what we're talking about is choosing a specific niche in the clothing industry. Now, dropshipping overall, as we all know, is a fulfillment business model where you really don't have to touch any inventory. Regardless of whatever the product is, the inventory is all going to be handled through your supplier. All you have to do is pretty much forward your orders from your online store to your supplier. So this is how it works for those of you that are just getting started. So you're going to have your own online store or your online storefront. You're going to be selling, let's say, a pair of shoes for $150. Now, somebody's going to come to your store. They're going to place an order for those same shoes. But instead of you fulfilling that order, instead of you actually getting those shoes, packing them up, taking it all the way to the post office and shipping it, what happens is you take those order details, you go to your supplier's website, place the order there and they take care of all of that heavy and manual work. They'll be the ones that take care of that order and they ship the product directly to your customer. So you're not touching absolutely any inventory. All you're doing is serving as a middleman. Now from your supplier, you didn't pay $150 for those shoes. What you paid was $50. So the remaining $100, that's your profit. Now in terms of niched clothing, what we're gonna be doing is specializing in a particular type of clothing, not just clothing overall. So if you look at a company like Shein, Shein sells a Shein shells. Shein sells a little bit of pretty much anything from shorts to t-shirts, dress shirts for both men, women, bikinis, everything. That wouldn't be considered niche. That would be considered just selling clothing. What we're going to be focusing on is a particular demographic of people who like a particular style of clothing. Niche clothing. A few of these niches can include bathing suits, retro and vintage clothing, gym wear, athleisure wear, anything that you can really get down to specifics about, not just overall and generic. Now, is it profitable to dropship niched items of clothing? Yeah. Why? Because you're going to be targeting a specific group of people, people that are actively looking for these particular types of products. When we choose a niche, what we're doing is we're not just choosing a niche for our business. We're also choosing a niche in terms of the demographic of people that we're going to be targeting or the people that we're going to be offering these products to. Because when you choose a particular niche, whether that be in the clothing industry or anything else, you're going to be looking for people that are interested in this particular category of products. Anybody else outside of this category, they're not going to care about it. So we want to make sure that we target people that are in this particular niche or in this particular category that are willing to spend the money on our products. So instead of showing our products to, let's say, a thousand people that might like our products, maybe 10 or 20 of them might actually end up making a purchase. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing it to maybe a hundred people that all like our products. So instead of maybe just 10 or 20 people making a purchase, it could be a little bit more because everyone is going to be interested in what we have to offer, not just a few people. Now, how do we know what niches are actually profitable and which ones we should go with? Well, there's a few ways to go about this, but the first tip that I'm going to give you is going to simply be make sure you choose a niche that you actually like. Now, the reason I say this is because when you choose a niche that you're actually interested in or that you actually have at least a bit of a passion about, then that makes it a lot easier to come up with products that people are actually going to like, because that way you know what is trending. You know what actually looks good. You know what people are going to be purchasing. Whereas if you choose any random niche just because it looks like it's profitable or like it's doing well, sometimes it might not work out for you because you're probably going to be going with any product that just looks good. And that's not what we want to do. We want to go based off of information and based off of trends. Now, when you choose a niche that you're interested in, you're going based off of information that you already know, information that you've experienced, information that you have, you have personal experience with. 
So you know about that particular trend, you know the demographic of people that are interested in it, and you know any types of categories that would go well with it. Let's say retro t-shirts could be good for old school music, maybe, things like that. But if you're having troubles finding a niche that you think could be profitable, or if you just simply want to validate your niche and make sure that there is going to be at least some sort of demand for it, either now or in the near future, then we can use Google Trends. So what we're going to do is we're going to run over to the Google Trends website and we're going to look for our particular niche. So let's say we want to sell bathing suits, right? So bathing suits. Now, what we want to do is when we get to this page, we're going to see a, just a bunch of random lines. We're going to switch this over from the past day to the past five years. And those lines are going to look a bit more organized. There we go. So now we can see that if we're starting our dropshipping business around October, this is going to be actually the time that you want to start importing bathing suits to your store, if that's what you want to go with, simply because this is the start of the trend or it's the start of the uptrend. So in October to November, it's all the way at the bottom. This is when you should be filling up your store with a lot of different options and looking up for new products to sell because after that, around January is when it starts to take off. So we can see that based off of past data back in 2020, that was the case all the way up until about June, where then it started trending down. And then same thing, October, November goes right back up peaks at about June and then drops back down. Now, let me tell you something. When you see it all the way up here, you don't want to start drop shipping at that point because honestly, there's nowhere to go but down. The reason for this is because this is the peak. At this point, this is when people are starting to lose interest. This is when you're mid summer at this point or you're going to be getting into summer. People already have everything that they need for the summer. They're not going to be shopping for it. So that's why you want to start stocking up at the lowest point between October to November. So you can start riding this wave all the way up until it peaks in June or July. Now let's take a look at another one. So let's look for maybe retro t-shirts. So retro shirts actually looks like it's pretty consistent throughout the entire year with a few spikes and a few dips. So let's see what we can get from this. So we can see that at the highest point, we're looking at June, July, about December, July, again, December, July, and November, December, July, June. So it looks like our peak times for selling retro t-shirts is going to be in the months of November and December and about June and July. So these are going to be the very, very top. So what we want to do is we want to get in at the bottom. So we're going to be looking at March or April, about the beginning of November, maybe a little bit before November might also be good very beginning of January, beginning of the year. So from this Google Trends graph, what we can take away is we want to start importing retro t-shirts to our store around January. January seems to be one of the sweet spots and between October to January, even though this is a niche that seems to be trending pretty much throughout the entire year because there are searches for this at some points throughout the year, in particular around December and June. So about every six months is when we start to see a spike for retro shirts. So if you're looking to validate your niche, this is one of the easiest and best ways to do it. Another way that you can do it is simply go on an app like TikTok and see what's trending. Now, once you're on TikTok, my favorite way to do this, the one that I found is probably one of the most effective is to look up the hashtag TikTok made me buy it and then put your niche afterwards. So right now I just put shirts. So hashtag TikTok made me buy it shirts. And these are all of the most popular shirts that are trending on TikTok right now. Some of these are a bit older. Some of these are fairly new. Like look at this one right here. Four shirts cost less than $20 and there's also free shipping. So either they're selling four shirts for $20 or they're selling each shirt at less than $20. But this is pretty much a artsy style niche because just take a look at the design on here. So they're niching down to t-shirts, but then they're sub niching down to the design type, which in this case could be artsy or modern. So now that we know everything that we need to know about choosing our niche and what niches are, how do we get started? Well, that's pretty easy. The first thing that we need to do is simply figure out where we're going to source our products from. Now, this is really going to be dependent on the types of products that you're going to be selling. And to do this, we're going to have to take into consideration a few different criteria. Now, I am going to give you a list of recommended suppliers that you can use a little bit later on in this video. Right now, what we're going to do is simply just talk about what we need to look for in our suppliers. And the first thing is going to be hands down international warehouses. You want to make sure that your supplier, regardless if it's a drop shipping supplier or a print on demand supplier, which we'll talk about in a second, you want to make sure that they have international warehouses. You want to make sure that they can ship from pretty much anywhere in the world and not just from one location. The reason for this is because if they only have one location that they ship from, then shipping can take a little bit longer than you would want it to, especially if they're overseas. 
if you have a Chinese manufacturer, you want to reach out to them and you want to make sure that they have a warehouse in the country that you're drop shipping in. So if you're going to be selling in the US, you want to make sure that they have at least one warehouse in the US that can ship out products to anywhere in that country. Again, the reason for this is because if you're just relying on a supplier from China, shipping out their products specifically from China, it's going to take a while. Overseas shipping takes a long time. Long enough where a lot of customers are going to be thinking, where's my product? They're going to start getting impatient and they can potentially cancel their order. Trust me, it's happened to me before. Now, going hand in hand with the international warehouses, you have fast shipping. You want to make sure that the suppliers are actually shipping out the products on time. You don't want them to take two weeks to ship out the products that are then going to be in transit for another week or two. That's just mm -hmm. completely unacceptable. I know a lot of people are watching this video thinking some, some companies actually do that. Yeah. Some suppliers actually do that. And that's why you need to vet through them and make sure that the ones that you're getting are good and reliable. A few of the easiest ways to do this is by simply just ordering a few samples, but not just ordering samples to yourself, order samples under a few different aliases. Is, is that how you pronounce it? Aliases? Aliases? Yeah, an alias, where you just go about a different name. That's what I'm trying to get to. Place a few different orders under a few different names, under a few different addresses, and make sure that they're all having the same support. The reason I say this is because sometimes you can talk to a supplier and they'll promise you the world. They'll send you out all of your samples on time, amazing quality products. But then when your customers place an order, it takes them two or three weeks to get the product. And when they get the product, it's just it's junk. The quality sucks and you get a chargeback or you get a refund on your first order. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure that our suppliers are giving us what they're promising us. So try to order a couple of different samples if you're able to. And again, even more important, order them under a few different names to a few different addresses. Now, speaking of chargebacks and returns, you also want to make sure that they have a good return, refund or exchange policy. Some manufacturers or some suppliers don't have this, which those are the ones that you want to stay away from, because a lot of the times that means that their products might not be good quality. If they're not accepting returns, there's a reason for that. And last but not least, you want to make sure that they have good reviews. Reviews are the god of social proof. If you find a company that has lots of positive reviews, then you hit the jackpot. You can check out that company, you can check out their different products, and then check out the reviews on those products as well. This is one way to be able to cross-reference reviews to make sure that they're legitimate. Also, when you're reading those reviews, make sure that they're not too generic. I've seen a lot of products and a lot of companies that just have very generic reviews that simply state, I love the product. My wife loved the product. My dog thought it was great. Those are very generic reviews that a lot of the times can either be fake or purchased. And we kind of want to stay away from that. We want to look for reviews that are specific reviews that talk about the particular product or service or the company that it's referencing. This way, we know that these are actual customers that have had experience with this supplier or vendor. Now, once we know what suppliers we want to go with, the next thing we need to do is simply set up our shop. Now, when it comes to clothing, there's going to be a few marketplaces or selling channels that you want to prioritize over others. And that's going to be three of them. The first one is going to be Shopify. The second one is going to be Etsy. The third one is going to be eBay. You can also sell on a platform like Facebook Marketplace, but it's not going to be as popular as something like Etsy, especially in terms of clothing. And same thing goes for Shopify. With Shopify, it's a bit of a different story, but we'll get to it in a second. So first, let's talk about the difference between having your own website and selling on a marketplace. When you have your own website, you're going to be selling on something like Shopify, Wix or WooCommerce, primarily Shopify. When you're selling on a marketplace, you're going to be selling on a platform like Etsy, eBay, Amazon or Facebook Marketplace. So the biggest difference between these two is going to be your own website versus somebody else's website. You're either going to be setting up your own site with your own products, your own brand name, everything the way that you want it to be, or you're going to be setting up shop in somebody else's store. In this case, let's say Etsy. When it comes to these two different types of marketplaces, Shopify, for the most part, since it's your own website, it's going to be fully customizable, while Etsy or eBay or Amazon won't. Shopify overall is also going to have lower selling fees than a platform like Etsy. With Shopify, you can expect anywhere between maybe about 2 to 3%, plus I think it's 20 cents per sale. And then you also have your subscription, which is going to be monthly, which could be about $30, or if you choose the yearly plan, it could be a little bit less. Now, with something like Etsy or eBay, you might not have the monthly plan, but you are going to have higher fees per sale. So Etsy charges you, I think, $15 to just get started and open up your store. But after that, they charge you 6% per sale plus 20 cents. 
And then on top of that, you also get charged a few extra fees for payment processing. So you can see the big difference in fees and how all of these things will be calculated. Now, another thing you really have to take into consideration is going to be the marketing. So when you're selling on your own website, you're going to have to market your products. You're going to have to be running ads. You're going to have to be making content. You're going to need to be getting exposure to your website. People don't know that your site is there. So you're going to have to put this in front of them. So that way they can actually make a click, go to your site and make a purchase versus something like Etsy, Amazon, or eBay, where people already go there ready to make a purchase. People already know these brand names and they trust them. So whenever somebody goes to these websites, they're ready to make a purchase on the spot. Now, in terms of marketplaces, my recommendation is going to be for one guaranteed Etsy. Etsy is a great place to sell niched clothing, especially print on demand products. Second is going to be eBay. eBay is also another fantastic place to sell on. And then third place is going to be Facebook Marketplace. You can sell on Amazon, but it's a bit of an extra process to get started selling on there, especially if you're going to be selling new products or your own products. Now, the other option is going to be my favorite way to do it simply because you can brand your products. You can start your own brand and make things the way that you want to make them. And that's going to be using your own website like Shopify. Now, when it comes to Shopify, a lot of people have issues actually creating a store because they're not very good at designing the entire layout, making sure that the different colors match and all that fun stuff, you know, stuff that to some people it's easy to some people it might be pretty complicated. Some people will do it in 10 minutes. Others might take them a whole day or even an entire week, but don't fret because if this is the way that you want to do things, if you do want to create your own Shopify store, then I have the perfect solution for you that pretty much cuts out the entire beginning process of it. So with AutoDS, you have the option to get pre-built stores through AI. Now, in order to do this, the first thing that you're going to need to do is sign up with AutoDS, which if you're not a member just yet, you can get started right now for just $1 for the next two weeks. And then once you sign on, you're going to have access to this. The first thing you're going to see is going to be the marketplace with tons of different winning products in a bunch of different niches that you can add to your store in an instant simply by clicking on import draft. But that's not what we're here for. So what we want to do to create our store is simply go up here to where it shows your store name or it might show add store. Then we're going to click on the add store button and we're going to look for Shopify store build with AI. Go ahead and continue. We're going to choose the middle option, which lets us use AI to generate a pre-built Shopify store. And then we're going to choose our niche. In this case, we're talking about niched clothing. So let's go with fashion and apparel. But if you want to go with any other niche, if you want to drop ship different types of products, you have all of these other options here as well. So let's click on next and it's pretty much it. Now the entire store is being built for us. Actually, before I even finish that sentence, the, the store was already built for us. So this is our login information. Let's copy over our email. So let's just run over to Shopify really fast. Now let's go ahead and sign on. Let's take our password. Now, once we get to the screen, the next thing that we're going to have to do is choose our plan, but we can do that a little bit later. Right now, I want to show you what the website looks like, because this is pretty much ready to sell. And it's even including already some winning products. So let's go ahead and click on view our online store. And this is what it looks like. So this is our fashion store. We can see that we already have free shipping and a countdown timer. That's actually pretty neat. We have a couple of banners that look really good. Everything's very aesthetically pleasing. Everything fits. You have already some text on here. Shop your collection. You got your different tabs. You even have a logo made already. And these are just a few of the different products that are automatically added from our winning products section. All of the products that are added to your store are going to be one proven trending products and two best sellers that have been selling either currently or in the past few months. Now, these aren't the only ones that you get. You actually get 10 different products, which if you want to check them out, you just click on new arrivals. And these are all of the different products that are imported to your store. Actually, it's more than 10. But as you can see, all of the products fit the niche that we chose. Besides that, though, once you keep scrolling down on your homepage, you have reviews for the store itself and you have all of the different links down here, which point you to different pages that just take a long time to make. So it's very convenient and very efficient that we have everything already made for us, like our shipping policy, our return policy or terms and conditions. Of course, go through all of this. Make sure everything's OK. Make sure that everything is coherent with your brand name, your brand colors and your actual policies. All right, now that we know the differences between the different types of marketplaces and which one we're going to go with, the next thing that we need to do after we have our shop set up is going to be importing our products. Now, this is something that can take a very long time if you're doing it manually. If you're doing maybe one or two products, it'll probably take maybe 10, 20 minutes. But if you're doing 20, 30, 40 products, which 
ideally is what you want to go with. You want to import more and more products. Then it can really start to take a long time. Sometimes you might even be in front of the computer for an entire day, just saving all of the different images and copying over all of the different descriptions, titles, variations, product prices, and pretty much all of the other details. And honestly, we don't have time for that. We need to focus on scaling our business and marketing it. So the other option that we have is to automate our imports. Now with AutoDS, we have the option to do that. So as I showed you earlier, we have the marketplace. Besides that, we also have the handpicked product section and the trending product section. All of these different sections have multiple types of products that you can import to your store within seconds. To start, let's just go to our marketplace and let's run over to clothing and shoes and jewelry. Now from here, we can go ahead and choose any one of these different products and import them to our store simply by clicking on import draft. Now this one is a Kendrick Lamar shirt or hoodie, so I'm not gonna go with that, but this one looks good, Faith Over Fear sweatshirt, and it's only $4.18. Let's click on it really fast. So we can see that the shipping price is about $7.72, the item cost is about $4.35, and there's a few different colors and a few different sizes. All right, this one looks pretty good. I like it. Let's say I'm going to start a faith-based t-shirt company or a faith-based clothing company. What we can do in this case is simply just click on import draft. So once we click on import drafts, it's going to go directly to our draft section over here where we can go ahead and edit it and change whatever we need. We can change the title. We can add a 20 collections if we choose to. We can go ahead and change the description as well. The cool thing about using AutoDS, or at least one of the cool things, is that you can go ahead and optimize your title and you can optimize your description with AI. So all you have to do is just click on optimize with AI, choose a tone. In this case, let's say I want to make it sound more professional with a balanced temperature. All you have to do is click on AI write and it'll rewrite the entire description for you based on what's already there and based on your title. So it rewrote everything that we already have here into this. Now, don't worry about these little weird signs over here because that's code. Once it's in your store, it's going to look a lot better and that's all going to be gone. Don't worry about that. So let's just go ahead and click on save and you can see that it redid everything. It kind of restructured it. It rewarded everything and it just made it sound a lot better. A lot of the times some suppliers might have some broken English in their descriptions using AI to rewrite it is going to fix the entire thing. But then besides that, you have your variations here. You can go ahead and calculate your pricing as well. You could take into consideration the fee percentage and your profit percentage. Let's say this, we want to do 13% in fees and we want to make our profit of about 120%. That means for this particular product, we're going to be selling it for $11 and our fees are going to be 13%. So our total profit is going to be $5 and 22 cents already taking out the fees. Our selling price is going to be $11 including the fees. So this really takes the guesswork out of having to figure out how much money you're actually going to make while you're including the fees on there. That's something that a lot of people have issues with, myself included. Besides that, we also have the images where you can go ahead and add, delete, or even edit the different images that you have. Once you're ready for this product to go live in your store, just click on save on import and that's it. Now, besides that, another option that you have is to import them from a supported supplier. So in this case, I found this Pluto Never Forget t-shirt over at Amazon. Even though it's $20, it's actually kind of expensive. This isn't something that we would typically go with, but I just want to show you how the import works. But what you can do here is just take that link, cut it or copy it, run back over to AutoDS, click on add products, add a single product, and then put the link in there. Then we can go ahead and click on edit now, and it automatically adds it to our draft section as well. Now, you saw that this is actually $20. It's a pretty basic design. And on top of that, it's got some pretty good reviews. It's got 4.8 stars and it has over 4,390 ratings. Over 500 have been purchased in the last month. That's insane. So how can we come up with something like this if we choose to go with t-shirts? Well, we can use print on demand. Through AutoDS, you have the option for print on demand simply by clicking on this over here. And you have all of these different clothing and apparel products that you can customize. So whether you're selling t-shirts, tank tops, sweaters or hoodies, or even shorts, leggings, and button-down shirts, you can customize everything on here. So that way you can offer unique products that others don't, or you can create different variations that others don't as well. Now, one of the easiest ways to come up with these different designs for your products or for your apparel through print on demand is gonna be by using AI. And religiously, I use Kittle. Their text to image generator is the best I've ever used. The only disclaimer I'm gonna give you is to be able to have high enough quality images that you can use for print on demand, you are going to have to sign up for their subscription service. Now, this isn't only going to be with Kittle. It's going to be pretty much with any design service out there. Most design services will give you free images, but at a low quality, a quality that's not going to be good to print. So just keep that in the back of your mind, but check out how well this works. Let's run over to their image generator. 
And let's do something similar to what we saw. So I'm going to do a retro t-shirt design with Pluto in the middle with the text Pluto never forget. Now text can sometimes be a little bit wonky with AI, but sometimes it works. So let's see how this comes out. Let's choose our design style. So in this case, I'm going to do t-shirt graphic and just click on generate. All right. So this is what I came up with and it actually looks really good. The only thing is that it gave me a little dog in the middle, I guess, because it kind of reminds of Pluto, but this looks good. I think this looks really good. Pluto, never forget retro print print, but okay, this wasn't supposed to be there, but we can easily just crop it out. All right, there we go. Now let's just do the background remover and that's going to be our final product. So what I like to do is to just go ahead and make it as big as possible and then download it. Always remember our DPI for print on demand has to be a minimum of 300. As far as the width and the height, I like to keep it at 20 inches. So now we can go ahead and run back over to our print on demand side on AutoDS. And I'm going to go with this t-shirt right here, which is the most economical one. Go ahead and click on add product. Let's upload our design. And there we have it. You can, as you can see, it looks really good. We can always go ahead and adjust it a little bit if we want. We'll make it a little bit bigger, center it. That looks good there. How would this look on a black t-shirt? Let's find out. Let's choose black over here and let's choose red while we're at it. So on black, it looks all right. Kind of have the dark text, but overall it doesn't look too bad. And then you have the red. So I think it looks good. I think it's ready to go into our store. So let's go ahead and click on save. Then it's gonna be in our draft section where we can adjust the pricing. For this, I'm just gonna go ahead and sell it at $24.99. Update, everything gets updated at once. And then save and import. Now, once we refresh our page over at our store, we can see that the first two products are going to be the ones that we just imported. So we have our print on demand t-shirt sewing sold out because I have the inventory at zero, but we can change that. And our faith over fear sweatshirt. See how easy that was? We designed an entire customized t-shirt using AI and imported it to our store within a few minutes. And we found this faith based hoodie through the marketplace on auto DS. And again, just took only a couple minutes to be able to import the entire thing. And they're both ready to sell. All right, so after you have your store fully loaded with the different products, the next thing you need to do is start marketing your store. And to do this is gonna also vary depending on the type of store that you have. If you're selling on a platform like Etsy, Amazon, or eBay, you don't necessarily have to market, but you can. The reason I say that you don't have to do it is because as long as you have the right keywords in your titles and your descriptions, your products are gonna be popping up in front of people that are searching relevant keywords. And again, marketplaces like Etsy, people go there ready to make a purchase. So these types of marketplaces are actively putting your products in front of the eyes of new customers to try to get them to make a purchase. Now you still can run ads on the different types of platforms. You can run ads on Etsy, you can run ads on Amazon and eBay. The way that you run ads is going to be a little bit different for each one. Etsy has Etsy ads where you're going to put a budget towards a specific number of products that you want to advertise. eBay is going to have more pay per click style. So they're going to have their advanced listings and their promoted listings. And Amazon also has their way to promote their products as well as Facebook marketplace. If you want some extra information on any of these topics in terms of marketing, then just check out our cheat sheet because there I'm going to have a little bit of extra information with a few different links that you can use to just learn a little bit more on marketing. Now, once you start marketing your products and you start getting a few sales, the next thing you're going to have to do is fulfill your orders. When it comes to order fulfillment, there's going to be two ways to do it. The manual way of doing it, which can sometimes leave room for human error and the automated way of doing it. So with the manual way of doing this, you're going to be going to your supplier's website, signing on, adding that item to your cart, and then putting the shipping details as your customer's details. Then once that product ships, you just take that tracking number and update your customer with it. Now this works, it's effective, but just like importing products manually, it works for a few products. Afterwards, it can start getting very time consuming. Not just that, if you make one typo on that order form, you can forget about that product. You're going to have to replace it for your customer because that's probably going to go to the wrong person. So in order to do this through auto DS orders will be automatically fulfilled. So when you get an order, it's going to go to your orders page over here where you can see the status of each one of your orders. So as you can see, this one was shipped. I have a few others here that were delivered. Now these can be updated automatically through auto DS if you choose to, or you can update them manually. But having all of your different orders in one screen just makes everything a lot easier. It makes everything a lot easier to handle. And the best part is, is that you have this right here for the statuses where you can actually see what's going on with your package. Being able to automate your order fulfillment process really does give you a lot of time back 
to be able to reinvest in your store, not just your order fulfillment, but also your product importing. Being able to automate these two processes is going to save you so much time, time that you can use to reinvest into your business, into your marketing, into your content marketing. These are all things that are really going to help you start scaling your business at an exponential rate. If you had to focus on importing your products and fulfilling your orders, you'd be spending a lot more time doing that than actually growing your business. Now, the last thing that you need to focus on is going to be your customer service. Always remember that when it comes to your customers, they come first. So if they have a question or if they have any concerns regarding their orders, get back to them within one business day. Do not let more than a day go by because if you do, customers are not going to appreciate that. They're going to be unhappy and they might either forget that they emailed you in the first place and go somewhere else to make a purchase or they might just overall be unhappy with your customer service after they made their purchase. Now let's go over a few of the different suppliers that you can use for your niched clothing dropshipping business. Now, as you saw, the first one is going to be the AutoDS marketplace and private suppliers. So through here, you have not only access to all of these different products in a variety of different categories and niches, you also have access to, like I showed you earlier, print on demand. So your options are expanded when you use AutoDS. Besides that, we have Shein. On Shein, you can find tons of different products in pretty much any niche or category that you can think of. You're going to find clothing for men, for women, for kids, and even for pets. So Shein has come a long way from when they first started. When they first started, they focused on solely women's clothing, but now they've expanded to pretty much anything that you can think of. Besides that, Shein is always staying up to date with the latest trends, so they always have the latest and most up-to-date products available. Everything based off of current trends that people are actually looking for. There's a reason why Shein is so popular. And besides all of that, their pricing is just absolutely insane. You can find some of the cheapest products on Shein, and you can resell them, you can drop ship them. The best thing is that Shein is actually one of our supported suppliers. So you have the option to import any one of their products simply by clicking on the link, copying it and putting it to AutoDS. So that way you can enjoy automation and continue scaling your business. Next up, we have Walmart. Now, Walmart is one of those suppliers that you're gonna go to and you're gonna find literally anything and everything that you need. Through Walmart, you're gonna have one, some of the best possible customer service. Two, you're gonna have a massive product variety. Three, you're gonna have a lot of different coupons and a lot of different deals that you can take advantage of. And my favorite, number four, is going to be their price match policy. If you source a product from Walmart, let's say these jeans for $20, and a week from now, they go down to 15 or even $10, you can reach out to Walmart and they'll refund you that difference. That way you can have a little bit of an extra profit. Or you can go ahead and price match for your customers, passing on the savings to them and just making them happier overall. Besides that, you have everyone's favorite retailer, which is going to be Target. Target is also another one of those companies that you can find pretty much a little bit of everything, but a bit higher quality. Target products are amazing. Target is very trend focused, so everything that you find on Target, you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be demand for it right now. Target knows what's going on. Target knows what's trending and they implement this as quick as they possibly can. So that way you can actually take advantage of this and see what is trending. You can use Target for your product research to see what's going on, to see what people are buying, or you can also use them as your supplier to import the different products to your store. Now the fifth supplier is AliExpress. Pretty sure all of you have heard of AliExpress before and for good reason. AliExpress has come a long way from when they first started and from when they used to have two to four week shipping times. While some suppliers still do do that on the AliExpress website, not everyone does. A lot of suppliers on here or a lot of sellers on AliExpress have actually upped their shipping game and they have some pretty reliable shipping at this point, most of the times between one to two weeks. Now, one very important tip that I am going to give you for sourcing your products through AliExpress, especially in the clothing niche, is going to be to request a sizing guide. You want to make sure that you have the size guide because some people are going to be smaller or bigger than others. And some of the products in particular, the clothing products from AliExpress, since they come from overseas in China, they could be a little bit smaller than US sizes. So always just keep that in mind. Always remember to request the sizing guide and make that available to your customers. And the last supplier I'm going to leave you with is going to be Amazon. Now, Amazon, when it comes to drop shipping, they're not necessarily the most friendliest. If they notice that you're drop shipping to a lot of different addresses or a lot of different locations, they could potentially ban or restrict your account. I will not forget and I will never forgive you. But don't worry because using Fulfilled by AutoDS, so using AutoDS's fulfillment service, you can go ahead and get around that. 
If you use AutoDS as fulfilled by AutoDS service, what happens is that instead of AutoDS using your buyer accounts or you using your buyer accounts to make a purchase from Amazon, AutoDS uses their own accounts. So that way your accounts will never be touched and you'll never be at risk for getting banned. But on Amazon, you can find quite a good amount of different products. And one of my favorite things about Amazon is the fact that you can actually find something like this, a five pack of shorts or a five pack of shirts, underwear, whatever it is, at discounted prices. So in this case, you can get five shorts for $36, when a lot of the times you can buy just one pair of shorts for $20. So that's a really good deal. And besides that, Amazon has amazing customer service and they have Amazon Prime, which really you can't beat Amazon Prime. Two day shipping is the best. And that's pretty much everything that you need to get started dropshipping niched clothing. What did you think of today's video? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Remember, if you want access to the cheat sheet, all you have to do is go ahead and leave a comment with the hashtag niches and let me know what your takeaway is from this video. Also, I'm going to have a link to a relevant article in the description below. So if you want to read a little bit more on this topic, just go ahead and check that out as well. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. As always, it truly does mean the world to me. Please, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always, my name is Mario. I wish you all nothing but the best in your dropshipping business and catch you guys next time.